Here is the step-by-step -step process to edit the Moody Green editing style here in Lightroom. Step number one is we need to, of course, adjust our exposure adjustments. This is lifting the shadows, changing the highlights, and maybe brightening the exposure a little as well. Now, your photo is going to be a little bit different than mine, of course, so your settings are going to differ. However, the main ideas that apply will be the same. So we'll first boost that exposure if your photo is a little too dark. Obviously, if it's too bright, you'll darken your exposure instead. Once you're happy with that base exposure, we'll go to the shadows and a lift up those shadows a touch and then we'll go to the blacks and bring that down a bit so that we add back some contrast and our photo doesn't look too flat from there we'll go to the whites and i'll increase the whites to make those highlights pop and then i'll bring down the highlights just a touch to bring back some detail in those brighter areas now the base adjustments of our photo are complete and we're ready to go on to step two which is the tone curve down here with the tone curve we're going to make sure that our region curve is selected that way we have our sliders here to easily adjust the contrast in our photo now the tone curve is like a creative contrast tool because you're adding to your base exposure adjustments. So my goal here is to increase the highlights a little bit and then bring down some of those shadows to add back some of that rich contrast. Now, the reason we're using the region curve is because the sliders just remove the guesswork of having to add manual anchor points to your tone curve. So going here, we're gonna add a bit more of creative contrast to the base adjustments that we had. So I'm gonna make those highlights pop a little more. I'm gonna make those darks a little bit brighter, but then still make sure they have that hint of contrast there. So just playing around with these sliders, increasing the lights and darks, and then maybe bringing down the shadows and the highlights just a little bit. Turning that on and off, you can see how it just makes our photo pop a little bit more from our base adjustments. Now we're ready for step number three, which is the HSL adjustments. This is where all the magic happens because the majority of our effect takes place here. First, we'll click on the hue adjustment, and then to make life easy, we'll click on this sampler. Now clicking on a green or yellowy tone in our photo, which in this case I have plenty of, I'll click right here and then drag up or down to change the hue of those sampled colors. The goal here is to favor a slightly more yellow color from our original, such as this. Next, we'll go to the saturation adjustment. Once again, make sure that our sample option is enabled. Click in the same color range, or same area of your photo, and it'll desaturate just a little like so. Then we'll go to our luminance, make sure our sample option is still enabled, and then go to the same area and then brighten it up to increase the luminance of that color range. If there's any other colors that are looking weird, such as the path here, I'll go to the saturation, make sure that sample option is enabled, click on that path, and I will desaturate it like so. So everything just blends in a little bit better. Now this brings us into step number four, which is color grading. Going to the color grading, we can add specific hues to the shadows or the highlights the midtones to really stylize our image. For the shadows, I'm gonna add a little bit of green. So clicking and dragging on this color wheel here to find a nice green tone. If I hold the shift key, I can change the saturation of that tone without changing the hue. So I wanna just have a very subtle green like so. Next, I'll go to my highlights and let's go add a nice teal color or like a bluish teal like that. Then I'll hold the shift key and then bring down the saturation so it's a little more subtle. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the color grading tools, make sure to check out this video right here where I get in depth with these tools and how to use them. I'm not gonna touch the midtones in this case. However, what we can do is use these luminance sliders to adjust some of the contrast in these shadows, in the highlights, and as well the overall midtones in the photo something like that. This just makes things look a little bit more dramatic within the image, in my opinion. Now this brings us into our final step, which is adding a vignette. Scrolling down to the effects adjustment, we'll go to the post crop vignetting and drag the amount slider down just slightly to darken the edges of our photo. Now at this point, our edit is complete, but if you need to make any final adjustments, such as your image is looking a little too dark or too bright, we can go back to our basics panel and we can lift up some of the shadows here. We can play around with the blacks to change the contrast and do the same thing with the highlights until you're happy with the look of your photo. Likewise, if things are looking a little bit too desaturated and gray, just go to the vibrant slider and bring this up a touch as well. So with all that complete, here's a look at our before and after. Our new photo is a little bit more dramatic and moody looking by desaturating those dominant colors, which was the greens, and then adding those green and blue hues with our color grading tool to really tie all those colors together in the image. Now, since you're watching this video, I know you're editing in Lightroom and I have a bundle of free free presets that are available over on my website. So I'll leave a link for that down below if you're interested in that. It'll help you to achieve these types of editing styles way faster with just one click. So again, I'll leave that down below if you're interested. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial.